Okay, truth be told, again, census unit, one of my favorite units, and this right here is one of the reasons why. I just love learning about optical illusions. So um, in class, we're going to watch this video, ASAP Science, Can You Trust Your Eyes? If you are watching it here, um, look it up. It's a great video with an introduction to optical illusions. But we're going to continue um, on to the next slide. All right, so here's an example of an optical illusion. So take a moment and look at this, and what do you see? This optical illusion is called the wife and mother-in-law, all right? So what you may see, so I'm going to help you see it just in case you don't, all right? So if you see the wife, here is the eye and nose. So she's looking away. Here's the ear. Okay, and this is the hat on her head with a feather. Okay, here's her chin. So that would be the mother, the wife. Okay, and then the mother-in-law, this is an eye and this is the other eye. Here's her nose, mouth kind of frowning, and here's the chin. Okay, so this is hair for both of them. So there's the mother-in-law. All right, so in a 2018 study in Australia, it says that who you see in the image depends on your age. They studied 393 people, <clears throat> not a huge sample size, but not tiny either. <clears throat> the younger participants tended to see the young lady, while older participants tended to see the elderly woman. So which one do you see? Once you see them both, you can kind of flip back and forth, but often it depends on your first impression. Now we have this optical illusion. What do you see? Do you see wavy lines or do you see um, zigzag lines? Most people see both, okay? Most people see, um, and this is primarily what I see, um, is zigzag lines and then wavy lines, okay? So that's what most people see, an alternating pattern of wavy and zigzag lines. The truth is they're all wavy, okay? And if you cover up, use your hand and cover up and just look down at each one and isolate it out, you will see that they are in fact all wavy, okay? So that um, illusion that was responsible for that illusion is something called curvature blindness. All right, so now let's look at this one. Okay, we have a spinning dancer. In which direction is she spinning, okay? clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so take a moment and look and see which in which direction is she spinning. So you may see the dancer spinning clockwise or counterclockwise at different times. I always see her spinning clockwise. And it's really hard. I have not been able to see her spinning in the opposite direction. Some people can. Um, in reality, this is just an animation on a continual loop, so she's not switching directions, okay? The reason is there aren't enough clues about depth in the dancer, and the image is a silhouette, so um, the dancer's ponytail or arm can only be seen when she's facing to the side, so it allows um, people to perceive it differently, or the same person to perceive it differently at different times. Okay? Are you one of the people that can switch her? Can cause her to spin clockwise or counterclockwise. If you are, teach me your tricks. Okay, here we have um, two uh, vertical lines like this, but let's focus on the horizontal lines. Which one looks longer? This is the Ponzo illusion. Okay, it's named after an Italian psychologist, Mario Ponzo, and he came up with it in 1911. So he was able to trick viewers into thinking that the parallel line in the background, so the one up here at the top, was longer than the one in the foreground, when in reality, they're the same size. We're just tricked because of the angled lines that go vertically. All right, so look at this one. There are dark dots in the center, okay? So take a minute and look, and how many dark dots can you see? Okay. Um, this is um, Ninio's extinction illusion. Okay. 
Um, there are 12 dots in total. It's a very difficult to be able to see all 12 um, at the same time. We typically only see a few at a time. And um, we focus on things because we focus on things in the center of our vision. So then we don't see all the other things at the same time. Uh, look at this cube. Okay. Uh, in which way is the cube facing? Like which one of those is the front? So is it coming out toward you? Is it going back away from you? Um, in which direction is the cube? This one I can make flip between them. The dancer, for some reason, I just can't. This is the Necker cube and it has no clues about depth. So we have to kind of interpret it on our own. All right. So some people perceive the cube with one side in the front, while others will imagine that very same one is the back. Okay. So again, it depends. And again, I can flip back and forth. So this square right here in the front, I can see it as a cube with that in the front. And I can also see it as a cube with that in the back. I don't know why I can't flip the dancer. I can flip the cube. Rabbit or duck? Okay, which one do you see? Here is the duck bill with the eye. If you see the duck, the rabbit, here's the ear with the eye. Okay, so um, this was uh, from the late 19th century. So it's the rabbit duck head. Which one do you see? Uh, once you see them both, you can usually flip back and forth between them. Okay, this, I promise, is a still image. Do you see it slightly turning? It's optical art. So these are images that appear to be moving, even though they are literally not animated. Okay? And uh, some people suggest it has, has to do with our brain's inability to process colors and shapes simultaneously. Essentially, there's so much going on so that we perceive motion, even though there is none. Here's another example. Can you see that rotation? I promise you, it's not an animation. It's a still picture, but we perceive it moving. And here's another example. This one is like tough for me. I see a lot of motion, but again, a lot of stuff going on in that picture. So our brain perceives it as motion, even though there is none. Okay. And then um, in class, we're going to watch um, a couple ASAP science videos, or at least one about audio illusions. Our eyes aren't the only ones that get tricked. So do our ears. We're going to finish out in class with um, a video um, from Brain Games about optical illusions, uh, which is pretty awesome. And there you have it, optical illusions. So cool. There are so many more optical illusions. So look them up, see what you find. Uh, tell me about it. Uh, I think this is so interesting and in how our brain gets tricked um, into perceiving things one way when in reality they're completely different.